You know what? Tarantulas can get sick too. Hi, this is Mark from Tarantohala. Inverts are fantastic animals to keep and collect. They are not as time consuming like other animals like dogs or cats, rats like our pet rat for example. But people don't realize that with a growing collection there comes a hidden danger. And I am not talking about the larger amount of time that you need to spend to feed your eight-legged horror hamster army that is slowly growing. I am talking about a hidden danger. A, yeah, microscopic danger that can potentially harm your whole collection. As mentioned in one of our previous episodes, this one right here, yeah. We are keeping our animals in quarantine. When we are getting new ones, they are in a separate room and they are staying there for at least a month. There is a really good reason why we are doing this. When you are acquiring new tarantulas, they can be a host of parasites. And some of those parasites can transport to other animals and those parasites can be deadly. So, yeah. So, basically it's a good practice that if you are getting a new tarantula, separate it from the rest of the collection, get it into a separate room and let it live there. Observe it. You can feed it, of course. It's necessary but for example sterilize the tweezers you are using don't reuse the red runners if the tarantula isn't eating the red runner it basically is the red runner is killed afterwards and thrown into the bin because those nasty parasites i would like to talk about they are spreading like crazy the parasites I am talking about are nematodes or roundworms. Those pretty nasty creatures are technically all around us, but some of those nematodes, they, they live basically in the ground. Those are microscopic organisms, you technically don't see them, but they are everywhere in nature. Some of them can attack your tarantulas. If I remember that correctly, they enter the body of the tarantula through their book lungs. They live inside the tarantula for around two weeks and after that, yeah, they, they emerge from the mouth of the tarantula and yeah, at that stage the tarantula is is already dead. If the tarantula is infected, it dies and flies are coming, those small ones, they call them gnats, I believe. They crawl inside the terrarium because they are attracted by a rotting flesh. They get inside the terrarium, see mm, yummy dead tarantula and they hop between all those enclosures that you have through the openings, the ventilation openings and spread this deadly disease because they can smell, for example, a dead roach that is inside a, an, an enclosure. And this is why, and this is why this, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to use a swear word, but this nasty stuff is spreading. So, are there countermeasures? Yeah, first the 
quarantine. This is probably the the most important countermeasure because you don't know what you are getting inside your home and separating them to a different room is is a big barrier for those nets to to spread this pretty nasty stuff secondly when we are keeping the tarantulas in quarantine we practically don't have ventilation holes because since we are we are checking on the tarantulas every day every two days and this circulation of of air is pretty sufficient for those animals and yeah those nasty insects that are carriers for for nematodes they cannot get inside that's pretty important uh, sanitizing tweezers and all the equipment that you are using it's is, is also important and yeah don't reuse the red runners so there is a good question if what what if you are buying a male for example because you want to breed a tarantula then you breed the tarantula but you are keeping the female in quarantine because you, you you cannot afford to wait with the male you want to mate them and hope that everything is all right so yeah it's another countermeasure and i hope this will probably help you can you save a tarantula if it is infected probably not i haven't heard of any method and to be honest i would be too scared that this that these parasites would spread so in my opinion the best solution is the good old freezer it sounds harsh but it's the best you can do for the tarantula and to save your whole collection are there some warning signs for example that the tarantula is infected by nematodes there are some they technically don't need to be seen but they are definitely a warning sign that you should keep an eye on this tarantula first the tarantula is webbing like crazy mm, but this can also be an indicator that for example the female is ready to to mate because I, i've noticed that with my lasiodora that she is webbing like crazy and those are basically pheromone webbings uh, secondly the pedipops when when a tarantula is yeah infected by nematodes they are like crawling their pedipops under the body so just like they would try to yeah grab something under their belly this is a second sign a warning sign a third one i've heard is that they are sitting a lot around the water dish like they would brush their teeth or clean their mouth um, could be a sign of dehydration but maybe they are not dehydrated so also a warning sign it's best to take the tarantula out put them in quarantine better be safe than sorry one very interesting effect a visual effect of a parasite infected tarantula a nematode infected tarantula is that it is that the body after the tarantula died is shimmering like like it is metallic you can take a torchlight and shine on the body and you will see that everything moves on the body so the second most common disease among tarantulas but technically it's not a disease it's a syndrome it's the 
dyskinetic syndrome or the DKS and most tarantula keepers will experience this syndrome at least once I have had the I wouldn't say pleasure it's not a pleasure it's a pain to watch I had it three or four times in my spider keeping career and I only had once the luck to save a tarantula to fall for this syndrome and only because it was before the molt of the tarantula so why is this syndrome so deadly basically when you are looking at the tarantula with the DKS you could almost think that the tarantula is drunk because they have difficulties of moving and by extension they have a difficulty in grabbing food drinking water and all the stuff around so they cannot take the nutrition that they need, they cannot take the hydration and through the DKS they will probably starve to death or lose all their body functions which is sad to watch so yeah be prepared for that there are possible solutions there are some some ways to help your tarantula but they are not easy to apply the DKS is a syndrome so they mean your tarantula is sick and you need to find out what causes the symptoms this syndrome there can be bacteria viral reasons for example there can be for example uh, dehydration of the tarantula and the whole body fluid movement inside the tarantula is failing so this can be one explanation why the tarantula behaves like it behaves or maybe the tarantula is intoxicated from I don't know some chemicals that are floating inside your home and this is also pretty bad and depending on what you think that the tarantula could fall for there is a theoretical solution how to help your tarantula for example if the tarantula is dehydrated you need to give the tarantula water but as mentioned earlier it's not that easy because the tarantula is not really able to intake water and food I believe so they, they, they are definitely struggling when it comes to viral diseases or bacterial diseases you could for example raise the body temperature uh, I mean the enclosure temperature because bacteria die in high higher temperatures so you could for example raise the temperature the, 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 the temperature of the enclosure to around 29 degrees maybe 30 for some time and in this way enable the the tarantula to to fight the yeah the microscopic invader and for intoxication that you need to wash out those toxins from the body of the tarantula so we are going back to rehydrating the tarantula it's it's best done the the whole hydrating of the tarantula is best done in an ICU so you are taking a container you're putting some uh, kitchen tissue inside you put the tarantula inside with 
the back of the tarantula facing downwards. Everything is lightly misted, the humidity goes high and you're putting some water droplets on the opening of the mouth. It, it, looks, it looks creepy but it's one of those methods that helped some of my tarantulas in pretty rough times. So it's definitely a, a good trick to know when it comes to the knowledge of a tarantula keeper. And what about the food? Because yeah, the tarantula needs food. You can mash up, for example, uh, a roach and try to stick the mash, mashed roach inside the tarantula's fangs. Some people have done it. I hadn't had a chance, so I hope I don't need to do that in future. But it's good to have the knowledge. So, now it's your turn. Tell me about your nightmare experiences with sickness among tarantulas. Let us know in the comments and give some advice that how you manage to save your tarantulas from the ultimate fate. I believe it's pretty important that we share this information among each other since yeah those are our pets. It doesn't matter if you have just one tarantula, ten or a hundred. We care about those animals and we want that they feel the best they can. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing, ring the bell, leave a comment what you like, what you want to see in future videos. And as always, thank you for watching Tarantuhala out.